Yo, subscribe to Phenoboxing right now, or else. Ba -ba -ba. Oh, <laughs> Daniel Jacobs. Well, at this stage in boxing, there's no easy fights. He's a top 15, 20 guy. I would say he's a gatekeeper, but he's a tough gatekeeper. You know, he doesn't lay down. And I mean, if he goes down, he gets back up. And so I know a durable guy like that serves as a great show. So I'm very knowledgeable of that. And the respect that I give every opponent is making sure that I prep 100% to give my very best. One of the things he said about you, one of the reasons he doesn't like you, he says you're not a closer. You don't get knockouts. You, you have a boring style. Are you going to prove him wrong or prove him right Friday night? I mean, just think about it. Like, you know, we've had similar opponents. And look at my performance versus his performance against those same uh, opposition. Mm -hmm. It's just my resume, my skill set, everything speak volumes. Take nothing away from him, but it's just – it is what it is, and um, I'm going to show him Friday night, point blank, period. Some have said, maybe even him, that the reason you've talked so much is you're a little bit jealous of the success he's had, and you feel like that should be you, not him. You agree with that? Not at all. <laughs> no? I mean, there's only one Gabe Rosado, you know. I think, you know, I'm relevant because I'm authentic. I mean, the fans relate to me, so... I ain't here because the promoters are pushing me or nothing like that, or the network is pushing me. I'm here because the fans want to see Gabe Rosado. You are now with Freddie Roach. How has that changed your style? What kind of things will we see in the ring that maybe we haven't seen before? You know, Freddie just brings, you know, he just brings the best out of me. You know, great camp, um, very knowledgeable, old school, straight down to business. Just what I need, you know. Um, maybe in the past I was probably dictating a little bit too much of my camp and how the pace went and things like that. But, you know, Freddie's the boss. So, you know, whatever he says, I do. So what do you think the fight's actually going to look like? I know a lot of people, when they hear all this trash talk, they think, man, these guys are going to go crazy in round one. Do you see it as just a bell rings and you guys go dog fighting in there, or do you think it's going to be more of a tactical battle? It's going to be whatever it's going to be, you know. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, obviously at this level, I'm going to make adjustments. He's going to make adjustments, you know, so... But um, it's going to be a high level, you know, whatever, whatever kind of style this fight's going to be, it's going to be on a high level, you know, because it's a must win situation. Do you think that this is just going to be one of those fights where it's not even really competitive, that you're going to dominate him that much? Or do you expect this to be a close, hard fought, tough fight every round? Well, I can't really predict, but like I said, I can train and give my very best to uh, be prepared go inside the ring and be ready for the best Gabe Rosado that we have seen because he understands this is his last opportunity. And even though I've given him this opportunity, let's be clear, he's been given this opportunity. You didn't earn this right. You talked your way into a fight. And me coming out of this pandemic, I thought you was the perfect gatekeeper to stay busy and uh, get ready for my world championship opportunities next year. So understand your position, levels, Levels. I just laugh, man. It just sounds hilarious. I mean, but you know that, though. You you know that. You know I t I could afford world champions. I've had opportunities. Eddie Hearn can tell you. They hated me that I chose to fight you. Look at Instagram. Look at Twitter. Everybody is bashing me for taking this fight. But for me, you know, I still say that it's an opportunity for me to shut a man's mouth who's been seeking very bad against me over the past years. And you and I both know the things that you've been saying, the hate that you've been giving me over the years, the jealousy that resides yeah, within your never heart. Never hating, speaking facts. Never hating, speaking oh, okay. facts. So, you, well, okay. Never hating. Never Give hating. us some facts. What are the facts about him that we shouldn't facts. see him as a, a, an idol, a hero, for all he's been through, the championships he's won? No, look, the competition he fought coming up wasn't no big deal. No disrespect to those guys. You know what I mean? But when he had to step up, and he only stepped up two times, Canelo and G and came up short. He ain't fight, you know. He wasn't up against. I, one thing is this. 
I didn't come up on the politics. So I came up fighting the top guys off the rip. And I mean, I had to learn on the job. I didn't have an amateur career. I had to learn on the job, right? He, they, he was groomed to be where he was at. And I'm saying it's different. But when he had to step up, he lost. Okay, versus 12 losses, knockouts that you've been constantly put on the canvas. You've been slept. You've been slept. Okay. There's a difference. You've been slept. Okay. Okay. But, but guess what? Sleeping. I've been able to resurrect my career and become a two-time. And I'm here, right? And I'm here, right? Once again, because I chose you. But listen. You chose me. You lost uh, out of your last 10 fights. How many fights have you won? Right. But so I'm here, right? Okay. Can you put him to sleep? I mean, I'm going to try. <laughs> okay. you know, I'm going to try. Obviously, as a fighter, the main goal is to get a knockout. You know, don't want to be in there as long as you don't have to be. You know, we get paid for 12 rounds. But if it's in early, you go home and get to enjoy the rest of your night. So that's my plan. My plan is to go in there and execute. But what that execution looks like, we shall see. When the bell rings, what is he in store for on Friday? Y'all going to see Friday, man. I ain't going to give up nothing. You're going to see. Any final words? I know you got a, your family, friends couldn't be here because of the, the bubble. They're watching right now. What's your message to them? What kind of performance are they going to see from you? Um, you're going to see, uh, I won't even say a typical Daniel Jacobs fight. You're going to see a more enhanced, more improved Daniel Jacobs because my second fight at middleweight, I had a great camp. Shout out to my team, my trainer, Faris Ahmad, my manager, Keith Connolly, and everybody that's joined forces with me to make sure that I'm the best version of myself. I'm very comfortable at super middleweight division, and I look forward to giving a stellar performance come Friday night. And uh, this is just going to be an opportunity for me to shut this man's mouth once and for all, and you can go and continue to be a gatekeeper or retire and be an actor or a Hollywood star that you so claim that you want to be. So I'm going to give you that platform, my brother. What's your message to your fans in Philly? It's going to be war Friday. I promise you. I promise you, dog. All right. We will see you back here not, tomorrow not, for the weigh-ins. Keep the ears out your mouth. That's cool. My shit's looking pretty. Big fake 50, ass. 50,000. 50,000 in my mouth right now. You like this? real. I ain't uh, had to pay shit. This right. is real. Mm. Uh. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's get one more stare down. Our main event Friday night from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, the Hard Rock Resort and Casino. Daniel Jacobs and Gabe Rosado. The talking is almost done. Fight night on Friday. We'll see you right back here, 11 a.m. Have a happy day. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching. Please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and all our social media platforms at Fino Boxing. You can follow my personal social media at Adriana underscore sports. Enjoy.